Dr. Chris McNorgan, I saw the breaking news on Neuralink this morning. Why don't you tell us what that actually means? Thank you. Uh, so uh, Neuralink uh, got FDA approval to move forward with human trials uh, just yesterday. And uh, so what this actually means is we've now got a good uh, arms race going for who's going to be the first to, uh, to get this technology actually in the market. So Dr. McNorgan, when Thomas Smeek called me and said, we have a technology that uh, Neuralink should license that would actually be perfect with what they're offering. My response was, who's Neuralink and what do they actually do? So let's just start there. What does Neuralink do? Sure. Uh, so Neuralink is developing technology that would allow implantation of electrodes into the brain, right? So this is a really complex and delicate procedure uh, lots of risks, um, and there are many possible complications that can arise from this. Now, the technology that Hemostemics has developed uh, can actually uh, help the entire process from start to finish, all the way from you know mitigating problems where um, you know the implantation might be rejected to once the implantation has been accepted, can we actually ensure that it's going to function properly? So the uh, NCP technology that uh, Hemostemics has developed. Uh, helps every phase of this entire process and should be of interest to uh, Neuralink. When I read your background, I thought, and respectfully to the hemostemics team, I thought, wow, how did they get Dr. Chris McDorgan to join their team? I, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but you have a very impressive CV. Can you tell me why you elected to put your name and reputation and align with hemostemics? Um, so I've, uh, I've actually been uh, associated with uh, Thomas uh, for quite a while. Uh, so he and I both went to the University of Western Ontario and were parts of the, uh, the same uh, organization there. So we had met, you know, on and off through different alumni events. Um, because of the nature of my work, I've got a curated news feed where I get a lot of science news uh, that I read, you know, every day. And back in January, uh, something came across my feed. Um, concerning the uh, you know recent advances in stem cell development, um, so there was this this article about about this company uh, that had developed some technology that allows neurons to regenerate. Right, so this was exciting because neurons are one of the types of, of human cells that do not naturally regenerate. Right, so this is a was a huge development. Um, when when I read further, I found that Thomas, this person that I knew, uh, was actually involved in this endeavor. So. Of course, I you know got onto LinkedIn. I sent him a message just congratulating him and his company on you know their their achievement. So Thomas got back to me just out of the blue a few weeks later, um, just to uh, just to kind of get my opinion on some directions that he was thinking that his company might be able to go working with a company that like Neuralink, uh, you know, just to see whether or not uh, I agreed with their assessment that this technology, that this NCP technology would be beneficial for the sort of thing that Neuralink was involved in. And I don't usually read questions, but I have to in this case. Um, you direct the Computational Cognitive Neuroscience Laboratory at the University of uh, Buffalo. Um, and I'm reading here, the neural bases of cognition include AI methods to decode and simulate neocordial cortical representations of knowledge and motor intention. I'm gonna need you to dumb that down for me, please. Sure. Uh, so um, one thing that's not often appreciated, so right now AI is all over the place in the news. Every company wants AI. Um, one thing that's not often appreciated is all these recent advances in AI actually come from uh, sort of efforts of cognitive psychologists such as myself, who, you know, going back decades, have been interested in kind of developing these kind of com computer models of how the brain functions. So all these techniques have been developed uh, to, uh, to help scientists such as myself develop computer models that can simulate uh, how the brain functions so we can you know, do things like run experiments uh, that wouldn't be otherwise be practical to do in actual real humans. So a lot of my earlier graduate work uh, was involved in com coming up with these computer models uh, that describe, you know, how the way brain is uh, the brain is connected up uh, allows it to 
do human-like brain thinking things, right? So all of my PhD work was along those lines. Once I finished my PhD work, uh, which was concerned with computational modeling, I got into MRI technology so I could kind of have the whole picture of, you know, what's the physiology underlying how the brain works? How are, you know, what's the math behind how the brain works? Marrying it all together, can we then come up with these computer models that accurately simulate how the brain accomplishes things like understand language or program your hand to reach for a coffee cup or what have you. So Dr. McNorgan, of interest in the previous question, you said that the neurons do not regenerate. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Um, there are a few different classes of, of human tissues that don't naturally regenerate and neurons and heart tissues. Uh, those are two types of those. And that's why if you have damage to those types of cells, you end up with lifelong problems. And of course, many of our investor intel audience is going, that sounds impressive. Uh, what kind of market space, because they're very driven by valuations of company, how big of a, a market do you expect this might be? Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so right now, the companies that are engaged in this sort of research, uh, they're right now, because of the progressive nature of science, they're kind of working on the low hanging fruit. So right now they're just, just focusing on, you know, can we get some kind of electro technology inserted into the brain so we can re uh, read and decode the brain signals that might be used to program, say, a motor movement. So this would be for someone who has, say, like a quadriplegia or something like that. They can't move a mouse around on a screen. The brain works fine. The brain could tell their hand to move a mouse on the screen if it could, uh, but the signal's just not getting there. So they've got a tech, or they're working on technologies uh, to intercept those brain signals and send those signals. And so we'll skip the middleman. We'll just send the signals directly to the computer, right? So the low hanging fruit is just in assistive technologies, right? So the market for that is somewhere in the neighborhood of like 36, uh, 36.5 billion. And that's just, you know, people who, might need assistive technologies. But that's just, like I said, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, there's all sorts of applications for, once we have the technology perfected, right? Now we can look at, well, we have one-way communication from the brain sending a signal outside. Can we send a signal back inside into the brain? You know, and this could be used to address something like blindness or, you know, if you've lost your hearing or what have you. So uh, further to this, I read something about an application around dementia. Did I read that correctly? Uh, so dementia uh, involves breakdown of communication between different areas, or at least some types of dementia, right? So like I said earlier, you start off with when you're born, all the neurons you're ever going to have. And then from then on, it's just downhill from there, right? So your brain learns by building connections between areas, right? But certain types of diseases break apart you know, they cause different populations to degrade. And so we lose communication between different areas. Something like um, something like this technology that would allow regeneration of neural populations, which again, is otherwise not possible, um, could allow the restoration of, of some of this capability again. So let me just clarify, the technology you're talking about is hemostemics technology yes. or Neuralink's technology? This would be, this would be the uh, hemostemics technology to regenerate neurons. So if you have something like progressive uh, dementia, uh, which could be, you know, there could be some disease mechanism that is causing neural populations to die off. Again, they're not going to come back unless we have a new technology like NCP, which will then allow them to regenerate, possibly restoring functionality. Well, I thank you so much for your time. I am certain there are many people leaning forward in their chairs going, wow, I wish I hadn't partied so hard in the 90s. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you for joining the Hemostemics team. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much.